The first scripture reading is of Psalms 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am in the earth. Let the people say amen. Amen. Throughout January and February, Pastor Dustin and I have been a part of sharing a sermon series about how we can resolve to have better health and wholeness and hope in our lives. Today we come to that final sermon of our series, inviting us to consider how it is we can resolve to encounter God, finding God in our everyday lives and living. Our second passage of scripture comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. Listen for a word of God for your life and how you may encounter God this day. But Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Three years ago, I was hungering for a deeper connection to God. My spiritual disciplines and connection was, was okay. My prayer life was going okay, but I longed for something more and something deeper. During my prayer times, I discerned that I needed to spend even more intentional time with God, setting the same time every day to come before the Lord. I knew that God was acting, but sometimes I missed it because I wasn't open to receiving or recognizing where and how God was acting in my life. So while some years um, during the season of Lent, I chose to give something up, this particular year, I chose to take on having a meeting with God every morning at 9 a.m. I knew that God was going to be there, and it was just up to me to show up as well to have that daily encounter. I knew in my heart I was preparing myself for something. I didn't know what it would be yet, but I knew that I was yearning to draw closer to God, to be at a better place of strength and resolve, of connection unto the Lord for whatever would come. And so throughout that season of Lent, indeed I met every day with God, finding different ways to encounter God each day. Sometimes it was through taking a walk or through journaling, through quiet times of prayer or music finding times to pray for family and friends, for churches, for communities, for our nation, for the world. And through each daily encounter with God, I so grew in my own life. I was so grateful that God would take time to encounter even me, to bless my life and to deepen my understanding of who God was. Every day I found deeper appreciation of God's love and mercy of God's grace and forgiveness, understanding it in ways I never had before. Easter morning of that year came, and I knew that I had to meet with God earlier in that day than I had all throughout the season of Lent, mainly because I love the scripture text where it tells us that it was early in the morning when the women went to the tomb and found it empty. And so on that earth. Easter morning, I went early to meet with God. 
at our community at that time, we had a community Easter sunrise service, and we met at the cemetery. We met there to read the scriptures of Easter morning, to sing songs, to see what it would have been like to be among the dead and find the living. And so we went, and, and John 20 that day resounded in my life. I was amazed by the words there and the beauty of the morning that even amidst death, there was a word of hope. I was preparing myself still, and yet I didn't know what it would be for. For later that morning, at 9.30 Central Time, 8.30 Mountain Time, where we were living, my uncle was killed in a horrific traffic accident. I couldn't and still can't make sense of it, but I knew that I had to draw closer and closer to God who had been drawing me closer throughout the season of Lent, who had been preparing me by allowing me to see God at work each and every day and know God's abundant mercy. And to point me again to chapter 20 of the Gospel according to John, where even in the midst of the deepest grief, Jesus comes. Jesus comes to those who are weeping and calls out their name. For you see in the Gospel according to John in that chapter, Mary Magdalene had indeed gone early in the morning to the tomb, seen and found it empty, and she went back and told Peter and the other disciple. And they too came and they wanted to see the tomb for themselves, and they came and they saw it empty, and they ran back home. They had come and gone. And we pick up at chapter 11 where we begin today. And it says, Then Mary Magdalene finds herself there alone, weeping, weeping before the empty tomb where they had laid Jesus. And she peeks in again and continues to weep and sees those angels there, one at the head and one at the feet of where Jesus had been. And they ask her, Woman, why are you weeping? And then an amazing Jesus encounter occurs. We as the reader get to have a little heads up that it's Jesus who then comes to be with Mary. Mary doesn't yet understand it, but we get to have a look that it's Jesus who comes to speak to her, who meets her there. And Jesus says to Mary, who are you looking for? Of course, she, she knows she's looking for Jesus, but there's something, I believe, deeper in the question that Jesus asks her. Who are you looking for? For that was the same question that Jesus asked at the very beginning of this gospel. In chapter 1, verse 38, Jesus asked the first disciples who come to follow him in ministry, he asked them, who are you looking for? And he asked that same question again now to the first person who encounters him after his resurrection. Who are you looking for? It's a question of discipleship. It's a question of, of who are you following? Who are you called to know? And so while Jesus had already seen the face of the man who came to be there, she didn't yet know who it was until two verses later when Jesus calls her name. Jesus says, Mary. And in that moment, she knows, she recognizes that it is her rabbi, her master, her teacher, a word of endearment that she shares upon hearing her name called, and everything changes in that moment. She knows that it is Jesus who is her good shepherd, and she knows that the good shepherd knows his sheep by name and calls them by name, and their sheep hear his voice. She knows in that moment that everything he had said has now come true, that he would not leave them orphaned or abandoned, that he would come again to be with them, and he would come to bring new life out of death. She knows in that moment that that promise is for her. And then Jesus goes on to say, and go back and tell my brothers that this promise is also for them. I'm going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God, and new life has come. I wonder how often we are like Mary, where Jesus is in our midst, where God wants to encounter us and we can't yet recognize or understand it until we are called by name. 
how often God is absolutely at work and we don't yet understand how. Recently, we were at home and our family was talking about call stories, about the call story into ministry that Dustin and I each have had. We were sharing those with our children and they love to hear the stories of how God encountered us. And then our daughter asked me this question. She says, well, what are grandma and granddad's call stories? And I love that question because she knows they are not pastors and she knows that God has called them, has spoken to them, has encountered them and she wanted to hear their stories. And so we got on FaceTime and we called up my parents and, and invited them to answer her question of, of when has God called you? When has God encountered you? And they couldn't wait to tell those stories to the next generation. For indeed, one recalled the time where there was a sermon where she had heard the words before, but it was like never before. When the words were spoken, when you do it to the least of things, you do it unto me. And how that changed everything in an instant. And also sharing... The other one sharing about a life and a ministry and a death who forever shaped his life. And then that, in that, he saw God at work. And then we began to go on and talk about how God is acting every day in our lives. And if we will only be open to receiving that understanding, how beautiful it can be Friends, I so believe God is acting right among us in our individual lives, in our families, with friends, in our congregation and community. And sometimes we only have to be open to seeing how it is so. Lent is just around the corner, beginning on Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. And I invite you to consider how it is during this, this Lenten season you can encounter God for I believe God is at work, so how will we be open to receiving that? Each of us receives it in different ways. For some of you, you may encounter God through music or through liturgy, for being outside or for being by yourself, for finding time with friends, however it may come, I invite you to take that time to prepare yourself to draw deeper and closer unto the God who created you and gives you life. For this Lenten season is a time set apart so that when Easter morning comes, we can understand the power of Christ's resurrection, the hope that has been given unto us for today and for tomorrow. May we be open to God speaking, God encountering us in these days. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious and almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Open our lives so that we can be ready to receive you. Oh God, indeed, sometimes the busyness of our lives, the clutter, the chaos, the turmoil, it stifles us from encountering you right with us. Oh God, speak to us in ways that we can hear. Call our names so that we can understand. May we find ways to know the truth that you have poured out. The truth of new life coming out of death. This promise for us today, here and now. And the promise for all of our tomorrows. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I invite us to continue in worship as we sing our song of response, number 314, In the Garden. I 
come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave with me and he tells me I am his own and the joys we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own share as we tarry there none other has ever known Amen We come now to share together in our statement of faith that's on the screen or on your uh, um, insert uh, the Apostles Creed let us offer this with one another I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitted at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to respond to God's work in our lives and God's call on our hearts. And we do so with the dedication of our, our whole lives. We had this uh, couple who joined in um, the life of our church this morning. We asked them, will you support this church with their prayers, their presence, their gifts, their service, and their witness? And we're invited to do that with the whole of our lives. We give of our, our yellow sheets and dedication of our lives, as well as our finances and our time. We ask God to bless us as we give. Won't you give as God calls you this day?
as you feel comfortable. Gracious God, we ask and pray that you might bless us, our gifts. Bless our lives, bless these that we have given. Use them and multiply them to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to change lives, to transform our community around us. Lord God, speak to us your word for this day. Call us forward. Help us to open our hearts and listen for your voice. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us share together in singing our song of commitment, Lord Speak to Me, number 463. Let us sing. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone as thou hast sought so seek thy erring children lost and lone O oh, strengthen me that while I stand firm on the rock and strong in thee I may stretch out a loving hand to wrestlers on the May we go forth from here ready to recognize God in our midst. May you go in grace and go in peace. Amen. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name. God's favor. 